to try and get this started. Hey, welcome. Hi, everybody. Um, and I hope you're enjoying the wall of freak out emojis, uh, emojis that are happening behind me. Um, good times. Uh, I added that last time I was on the road and I'd kind of forgotten about it in my setup and uh, it's a joy. So if you're on Twitch, um, that's when you throw emotes up, that's what happens. They all kind of bounce around behind us. There you go. There's Mike Pillow. There's uh, a myriad of other things. Now you're getting carried away. There you go. The Lab Rats logo. Not bad. Not bad. Um, plenty of Zoltans and carrots uh, in honor of Carrot Pence. Um, and let's see. Hold on a second. Let me put this away. Do, do, do. Then I can see you guys. And then I don't have um, the, the chat up where I normally would have the overlay of the chat. So let me try and bring that up without overloading my system because I am currently in a hotel and the uh internet you know might be a little, a little less than uh optimal in some places let's just put it that way um wish me luck it should be okay let's see let's see it done control minus try and shrink this page down a little bit and, oh that's too much there we go now i can see you guys uh, yay, and we've got, um, I see some Facebook, I see some YouTube, I see some Twitch. We're all good. Uh, anybody who's on um, Twitter, you guys can just uh, go right ahead and uh, and make all the noise you want there. Um, also, um, you know, I haven't chased uh, followers or subscribers in that, the, the follower zone, in, uh, in Twitter anytime soon. So, um, if you can... If you're watching on there, you stumbled by, hey, maybe, sure, follow. Give me a follow, at Hal Sparks, and on Instagram, at Hal, at Hal Sparks, on both of those. So um, I started off late today because of the drive, but uh, let's get started, and um, we will have a, a bit of a show. And oh, there's a hype train already close. Fantastic. I think the emojis are what do it. I mean, that's, that's going to crank up. My guess is some sort of hype train situation. <laughs> it's all this... Um, you can subscribe uh, using Amazon Prime. It doesn't cost you a dime, and you'll end up with a subscription on uh, Twitter. And oh my gosh, it's, is it just me, or is this the first time I'm seeing in the overall chat the emojis? Yeah, they're they're adorable. Okay, so they're very cute. <laughs> Thanks, Templeton. Those are all Twitch emojis. Good times. All right, um, let me start the show. And um, I it's it's hard to figure out what to start. And you know what? I'm going to start with probably the most controversial of all clips. So let's just do it that way. Why not? Um, ladies and gentlemen, I present to you um, hippie Alex Jones and uh, and I and I guess the and the God Awfuls. That should be the name of his band. Apparently he's being robbed at the beginning of this video, I think. Um, or he's just showing that his hands are the same size as his face or I don't know. It's very strange. Um, he's chilly today in the studio, and they're sitting down. So this is now, by the way, on his live show, they now cut to a, a news segment um, with him in it. And um, and thank you for the follow, by the way. And um, this is about the, the story that Trump somehow was just about to, like, free Assange. And he was this close. And, you know, it was it was there. It was in the Pez dispenser of things that Trump was going to do, along with uh, um, his health care plan and his infrastructure plan. And um, those bills would, of course, pass. Um, and then um, what else was were we waiting for him? The, the wall to be finished. And yet it was finished. We now know it was finished. There was just more. He was it was so finished. He was going to do a second part. And uh, apparently right in there with it, was uh he looks like mr roger um in there with it was this um assange thing i think i want to hear his take on it this is the there, there's jimmy Dore's done this a bunch of other people this is in their like uh like schlock and roll fantasy camp of of things trump was totally gonna do and like if he comes back he's totally gonna do these things like he totally wanted to like he totally wanted to okay so um almost at a level two hype train here we go did the deep state establishment... Okay, all right. That's how we know you're an asshole right out of the gate. Did the deep state establishment... Pick one. 
for God's sake. If it's deep state, of course it's established. There's no quickie deep states. You can't play just the tip with the deep state. Bully Trump into not pardoning Assange and Snowden. Did they bully him into not pardoning Assange and Snowden? With what? They'd never do a thing like that, would they? <laughs> Good lord. He's got his own little graphic now. Cause the yeah. No, here's the fact news. Hello there, you six million awakening wonders. Thanks for joining me on this voyage towards truth. Uh, by the way, he's uh, he's got a meditation program in case any of this stuff makes you, this end of the world talk makes you feel anxious. If you want more truth, right in your face, right in your belly. Ew, how deep does the deep state go? Raining down from above. Okay, that's not pathetically sexual at all join us monday to friday on rumble we should nah skip ahead sorry one second um see big business corruption we have fantastic guests no, right. kanye says you can trust old russ a russell brand now oh yeah i mean you're in great company russell this you well, you couldn't have picked a this this video came out five hours ago and it's already got a quarter of a million views and uh, apparently nobody thought to rain that. They obviously finished editing sometime last night before the whole uh, um, Death Con 3 on the Jews thing dropped as far as Kanye. Good timing, dickhead. <laughs> That's amazing. Like Kanye says, you can trust old Russ. A Russell brand. Now, let's get in. Mm-hmm. If that doesn't... And look how happy he is. Do you think there's going to have to... Yeah, he, he said Death Con 3. Not Death Con. Death Con 3 on the Jews. That's what uh, good old Kanye said. But uh, right in the same interview um, where he said a lot of uh, gnarly anti-Semitic stuff and then later posted that he was t a little tired, but he was going to go Death Con 3 on the Jews. And uh, yeah. This story. One of the great guests we've had live on Rumble has been Stella Assange, wife of Stella Julian Assange, currently in Belmarsh Prison, put there because of his revelations that damaged U.S. reputation. He, he no, um, the the Vietnam War damaged the U.S. reputation. Um, Assange is not in Belmarsh Prison because of what he's done for fucking America, okay? Or he'd be in a US prison. Told the truth about US foreign policies. Did he? Which ones? Some of the unnecessary deaths that were caused. <laughs> the unnecessary deaths. Well, I'm glad Russell thinks there are some necessary deaths. I think that's a good thing. I, I That that actually interests me a lot more. I who, who wants to hear Russell Brand's lists of necessary deaths? The CIA threatened to have him killed. This is a matter of public record. It's a matter of um, mainstream media reporting, which we all, you know, you know you've got to be told lies to you all the time, except when... I asked Stella, did you ever think that Trump would pardon Assange? The reason I asked it is because I know a lot of you like Donald Trump and think... A lot of you. All of his viewers. He's become a Trump channel. What... There are zero Russell Brand viewers who don't, who wouldn't vote for Donald Trump. Zero. Donald Trump was a genuine maverick and a genuine opponent of the establishment. And a genuine grabber of pussy. And, you know, they want you, but they need to get me to get to you. All of that stuff. I read your comments. I read the chat. Uh-huh. <laughs> I asked Stella. Yes, if anybody, by the way, has been... Um, the victim of audience capture, or I guess went willingly. It's it's Russell Brand. How come, if Trump was a genuine outsider and a genuine maverick, how come he didn't pardon Assange and Snowden as part of his presidential pardoning? He was so going to do it. Why didn't he? You know what? He had that big list of Jan 6 people, and, you know, it. the, the Bannon pardon took a long time. Campaign. Here's what she said. Did you ever think that Donald Trump might pardon Julian? Now, my concern was that I'm talking to a furry pink crayon. Well, I was certainly trying to convince him to pardon Julian. Um, I think, you know, he's Donald Trump is such a uh, 
Um, Pick your words carefully. You don't know what team Russell is on. I don't. Grotesque old fart, pussy grabbing, uh, fake billionaire who uh, um, somewhere out there has an N word tape floating around, and the day it pops up, you don't want this interview to come back to bite you in the ass. I'm trying to help you out. Oh, uh, a lot of people will be filling that silence in for you. Uh, yeah. Mm hmm. Unpredictable. By the way, little, uh, Look, a little aggressive sitting stance there, Russell. I'm glad you're trying to make her feel welcome. What is this? What kind of National Geographic crotch display is this? Does, does, is this how he sits across from all women? Go get me the big man-spreading chair, will you, Nigel? Yeah, yeah. Double person. Honestly. Uh, give me the pink hat. I look like I look, I look like a penis. I sit making you think penis. You obviously like Trump, and he's kind of a dick. So what am I doing? He's so unpredictable. There, that's, a, that's an opportunity which I thought, you know, it could work for Julian. And, you know, he's my husband. He's unpredictable, and that could work for Julian. No, you, you, you what was predictable was he would uh, pardon Steve Bannon. And he's the person I love the most, so I will try anything I can to get him free. Let me know in the comments, let me know in the chat, did you think that Trump might pardon Snowden? No. Assange, genuine enemies of the establishment, pay- uh, If they were genuine enemies of the establishment and Trump's truly an unpredictable maverick, why didn't he do it on day one, stupid? Same way, the reason we were still in Afghanistan when he left in their way, I would say righteous people in their way, Edward Snowden, I think, was motivated purely by a love of America. And <laughs> no, he wasn't. Then why did he leave with two laptops, leave one of them in China, and then fly to Russia next with the help of Glenn Greenwald's crew, and they abandoned him there? Like, if there's, if, if Snowden is alive, it'll be a fucking miracle. His, his Twitter is run by a chatbot right now. American values. Julian Assange, I think, is a person that believes in telling the truth. Oh, yeah? All the truth? Or just the truths that he can weaponize and and actually make a living off of? Because I, I don't hear him... Uh, oh, I'll give you an example. The Russian apartment building bombings that, that when Vladimir Putin was prime minister, that, that led to him becoming the president of of russia in a matter of months are largely believed um by you know journalists who were there and people who were involved to be an act of government sabotage murder of citizens by putin and his ilk so that he could work his way to the top and become president pretty standard stuff and there's supposedly a lot of digital information floating out there besides the people who have interviewed people on the inside who believe that happened um, there was never an attempt, nor has there ever been an attempt that I'm aware of, by Sanj and WikiLeaks to go after that information. Now, um, some members of current WikiLeaks uh, do tend to go, are, are pretty broad. But the only attention that comes and the only funding that I know of that they get on any major scale comes when they go after the United States. So the idea is that b because they're always going after the United States specifically, or it only gets attention when they do, that by rote, that means we're the worst guy on the block and we're the only one who does stuff. And that when we do it, it's specifically bad or particularly bad in this case or whatever. But in this, like, I, there's, this has nothing to do with the kind of open, this is like the people who say that they're anti-war when really they're, you know, when they're talking about the Russia attack on Ukraine, when they always seem to be asking that Ukraine give up, you know, land, give up peoples, give up uh, their, their resources to Russia. If you're against the war, then you would, your primary focus, I would think, would be with the person who started it and getting them to stop. These people are human beings. I'm not suggesting they're anything other than flawed human beings. <laughs> yeah, you are. You're making artificial comparisons um, based on their, the mythology around them. But why are they in the position that they're currently in? Well, in this case, Snowden was flown to Russia. He would have been out of jail by now. He would have been, he would have had his sentence, he would have gotten a, a you know, a, a pardon. Maybe he'd have gotten six to eight years, probably. He'd be out by now, you know.
Pardon reality winner, by the way. Hashtag pardon reality winner. The people who actually do it, who are whistleblowers, who don't flee to foreign countries that are hostile to the United States, um, uh, get get first dibs on being honorable, ethical whistleblowers in my book. Why is Snowden exiled in Russia? Have um, because Glenn, because he refuses to come back, and Glenn Greenwald dropped him there. Sought solace in other nations first. Yeah, China. Solace? What is it going? Was he on sabbatical? He didn't go to Japan, dumb fuck. Why is Assange currently in a British prison? Um, you tell me. You're British. What's going on now? When I <laughs> why? Why is he there? Who? There's a counter argument that usually predicates on putting the lives of military personnel in danger, and I think that would be unforgivable. I'm very supportive of the military, and I think the people that have the big which military are we talking about? Russia, right? You're talking about the Russian military. We're talking about mainly the Wagner Group. Uh, tell me in the comments below whether or not you're in the actual Wagner Group or you're just a relative who types on their behalf. It's obligation to look after American military personnel. Are the Pentagon or the British military, those are the people that should be looking after them by paying them properly, taking care of them when they're in service, and certainly taking care of veterans. And I think there's a lot of questions to be asked there. Have a look. <laughs> are, are you going to ask any of them? No. I'm just pretending to think that so that I can, yeah, he's for ISIS. I think the military commanders of ISIS have a responsibility to, Glenn Gre I mean, it's all the same. Hold on, breaking points, when asked about the same story, he suggests that Trump was on the precipice of pardoning both Snow. Okay, that's the source of this? That Glenn, that, because I've been wondering what the source for everybody, like I've seen this float around. So Glenn Greenwald is suggesting that Trump was this close. Really? Is that what we're going to find out? And Assange, but was persuaded to do otherwise. Who has the power to persuade Trump to do other things? Um, uh, Hannity. No. Ivanka. No. Um, I don't know. Who, who has the, pr uh, like his primary loans right now? Like, Deutsche Bank, Alpha Bank, um, People's Bank of China. What does that suggest about democratic power? If Democratic power? I'm sorry, we, we voted him out, so he's... <laughs> People are more powerful than the president, particularly if that president's like a crazy, ego-led person like Trump, rather than a sort of <laughs> near cadaver like the current White House occupant. Who has sufficient... Near cadaver? Fuck you power to manipulate these apparently potent marionettes <laughs> these apparently potent marionettes so wait a minute biden's not being manipulated because he's old but someone must have superpowers to manipulate trump he's been manipulated it, it, trump is practically in a hypnotic state as he walks on stage every time he does a rally if you mention something to him he'll go off on it like it's a fact he's known his entire life there was real movement inside the trump administration uh-huh to give particularly snowden a pardon it came much closer to snowden than they did to assange oh yeah says who and if you think about it why would they have initiated an impeachment proceeding against a president who within a couple of weeks was on his way out. And because he was engaged in a violent act against the country and if you impeached him and removed him from office, he wouldn't be able to run again and therefore would eliminate the possibility that his followers would attack the fucking Capitol again when he runs, if he runs and he won't, but if he ever ran again and he loses reason crystal was that they were very afraid that on his way out uh, uh, trump was going to do a bunch of stuff what like sp pardon steve bannon would you think that shit would he would he wouldn't do those things on his way out including not just giving pardons to to snowden and Assange, but also declassify all kinds of documents he had been threatening to declassify about the cia about the kennedy assassination and the only and the only reason he didn't do it was because he didn't do it leverage they had against trump doing what they considered crazy stuff on his way out was the second impeachment trial and they explicitly communicate well, and again he's a vindictive asshole why would he not do that anyways as a matter of fact with somebody like trump you are more in danger of him doing something like this on his way out the door if you try to pull an impeachment on him
communicated to Trump, multiple Republican kind of hawkish senators did, that if you do what we know you're thinking about doing, what Rand Paul and Matt Gates and others were encouraging him to do, which was pardon Snowden, that will severely uh-huh. jeopardize your chances of getting out of this. Did he? That's that's a squeaky chair. I'm not going to assume that Glenn Greenwald farted on the air. Impeachment trial with an acquittal. We're talking about the power that. Okay, just gibberish. That that it, that apparently the belief system on his part was that Matt Gates and Rand Paul were floating that Trump should pardon Snowden and Assange on his way out the door. And the only reason he didn't was because he was worried about his legacy or the vote to impeach and remove him after January 6th. After January 6th, do you think he'd give a rat fuck about Julian Assange or Snowden? Trump doesn't care about any of them, anybody but himself most of the time. Good Lord. Continues to exist regardless of which president or political party occupies the White House. It's weird. It's like almost like what Assange did and what Snowden did were crimes no matter who's in charge. That's weird, isn't it? We talk about this continually and Julian Assange is a great example of the consistency. Obama's in power, Snowden and Assange are charged with the Espionage Act. Right. For engaging in espionage. Assange specifically made moves to uh, uh, not just receive whistleblower documents and release them, but to aid in getting those documents in the first place. That's why he's in trouble. Snowden, in his case, stole stuff directly, flew to China, and then they helped him, Greenwald's you know, group helped him fly to Russia and dropped him there. Trump's in power, he doesn't do anything about it. In a it's weird, in it? Oops, somebody edited him. We had a little, uh, we had the staff that's standing just off camera that we got to see the other day um, jumping in. Are charged with the Espionage Act. Trump's in power, he doesn't do anything about it. In a sense, I look at that. He probably had a sentence in that, which, you know, probably me. He probably got all long winded about how, you know, when when Obama does it, it's because he's sinister. But when Trump does it, it's probably because he's scared. He's a little boy. He's trapped. He doesn't understand. He's new. He's an outsider. He doesn't understand the power that he has. Are you fucking kidding me? Noam Trump's the dude who was like, you can just grab a woman by the pussy. They can't do anything about it. You know, and if you're a star, they let you do it. You know, he's just great. I just start kissing strange women because I'm allowed to. And that dude apparently didn't know the extent of the powers he would have as president of the United States. Dude thought he had too many fucking powers. He says, in the subjects in which both parties... Shit, a bunch of edits around this stuff. ...agree, you have no choice at all. Assange is an example of where both parties agree. What information did he have? What is the documentation that Trump was considering releasing? And it's not shit that Assange had. What the fuck are you talking about? What do you really believe about what you think about this? Leave a comment below because this is really me just farming conspiracy bullshit. So you guys can, you know, I can sell, hit the notification bell. The Kennedy assassination. He didn't fucking nothing. Jesus Christ. Trump can't, he doesn't read. Trump barely finished articles about himself. You think he was spending nights with a fucking candle in the basement of the White House in a in a file room, on, you know, in the president's only room, reading shit on you know, like, oh fuck, they've got the they've got his brain in a jar. Do you think we're told the truth right now? When Jesus Christ, no, by you, no. I mean, like the Nord Stream two pipeline suddenly springs a leak. Do you really? It's it. It didn't suddenly spring a leak. There was an explosion. It was caused by a pig inside of it. Russia sent it to relieve all the gas that was trapped in it without having to release it on their own shores. That's all. They blew it up. I think it's not possible, impossible, beyond the bounds of possibility that Navy SEALs were involved in that. Do you think it's... <laughs> Navy SEALs. No, like harbor SEALs, maybe. Might have been... I'm, I'm going to go with uh, leopard SEALs. They're adorable. And they're frisky. And sometimes... I mean, if you, I've, I've seen some of those kids' cartoons. You strap the right explosives to them, and they're, you know, they're, they're next level. This is, it's, a, it's just a, it's a Pixar film that's both touching and exciting. That shouldn't even be discussed, shouldn't even be considered. 
Dude, you can consider anything you fucking want. But the idea is that, don't you think? Fucking, oh, yeah, maybe, eh? Well, could be, you know, could be Navy SEALs. Could be SEALs. Could be, na- who knows? D- Navy dolphins. Could be could be Navy octopi. If you do that, you know, they could have a whole, like, I've read a thing. I was like, I was watching Ancient Aliens getting baked to fuck. And I was reading this thing about how they've started training otters with the oh, octopus. that not feel like? What's a pig? It's a pipeline inspection gauge gadget or uh, like gauge or gadget. It depends on what you're talking about. There are these cleaning rigs and these pressure checking rigs that go through the pipelines and check them from the inside because you can't open, you can't shut them off and shut the pressure off when you're pumping gas through it all the time. If there's a problem and put a person in there to look around and temp on things. So uh, 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 the pigs are sent in through the, you know, one end or the other. In the case of Nord Stream 2, they'd be sent in through the Russian side and they they check them. If you watch the movie, um, uh, The World Is Not Enough, the, the uh, Bond film, there's a couple of Bond films where they showed them. But this one in particular, he and uh, Denise Richards, are, I think, are riding along in one of the inspection ones that a person can be in, but they're, you know, they don't even have to be that big. But you just attach explosives to it and it drags it to whatever point you want. You stop it and blow it up. Pingement not only on your free speech, but your free thought. Okay, there's nothing wrong. A, the fact that this fucker has 5 million subscribers and has just opened a Rumble live stream and is in the UK where they have starker rules about free speech than the United States does. The fact that he's bitching about, you can't even think these fucking things. Like, Jesus Christ. Whilst I'm not an advocate of Donald Trump, I can see... Yes, you are. Oh, look at this. They cut a piece out again. Whilst I'm not an advocate of Donald Trump's, I have grabbed women by the pussy randomly in my life. And it is... He's right. When you're a star, you can just do it. In your free speech. Watch this. But your free thought. Whilst I'm not an advocate of Donald Trump, I can see that Trump was a figure... Fuck you. But what'd you cut... What'd you slice out, asshole? What? What was what was worse than whilst I'm not technically, uh, but I do like him. Like he probably went on one of his rants about like he is charming when he says all oh, this shit. But was a berserker, a disruptor, even a berserker or a disruptor. Yeah, that's who you want in charge of a function in government. <laughs> this, this, you know, there's a reason why we have civilian separation from our military in the United States. You, I mean. This asshole, by the way, has nothing but contempt and criticism for our system of government. Meanwhile, he lives in the UK where they still have a functioning monarchy. I'm sorry, we fought a war with with these assholes so that we wouldn't have some inbred dipshit calling the shots. Berserker. There's no such thing as a berserker that plays golf, you goofy fuck. Trump gave tax breaks to the rich and did things that I recognize are not going to help ordinary Americans. And <laughs> yes, like like me, I do nothing that helps ordinary Americans. So we've got a lot in common. We are, we both have grabbed women without their permission. You know, I'm not proud of that. Not proud of that. For don't address the fundamental issues that democracy must address. I can see that he mm-hmm. like not having a monarchy. All right, I'm enough agitated establishment figures <laughs> agitated establishment figures he agitates his own fucking wife like the clintons and evidently he- like the clintons he agitated them dude he lurked behind the female candidate like he was gonna fucking jump on her he accused her having of, of having parkinson's and a stroke and being a murderer shut the fuck agitated an impact on the figures that are more deeply buried whose names we don't even know <laughs> yes those that cannot be spoken of yes you know what i mean like the ghost of J. Edgar Hoover, perhaps you know other members of the the illuminati that obviously work in cut of in the halls of power <laughs> that can't be spoken of. Get the fuck out. Oh no, I don't have enough villains in the American uh, electoral system, so I'll just make some up. <laughs> Does that relate to... Hold on, is that the cut out of that? Act ...on the figures that are more deeply buried, whose names we don't even know. Does that relate to the documents that he then takes to Mar-a-Lago? Because there's some reporting that the documents that he took there were, you know, 
related to Russiagate. What I know for sure. <laughs> this re reporting, it's not reporting. That's what Trump is. Trump's group is saying because they're trying to drive attention away. This is totally Trump doing a PR pushback. Look, like, tell everybody that the shit I took was uh, stuff that was gonna make me it, it, prove my innocence. But I wasn't done going through it. Like, dude, if it could prove your innocence, you would have gone through it while you were in office? What the fuck were you doing from November to January 5th? <laughs> Is that Trump was threatening to declassify all of those documents relating to Russiagate because Trump believes, I think, with a lot of validity... Yeah, sure. With a lot of validity. Um, and, you know, this is coming from a guy who paid for the plane ticket to drop Snowden in Russia where he could never escape. And he's probably dead now because of me. But um, that there were crimes committed or at least ethical transgression. Oh, dear. Not ethical transgressions. You're telling me that Trump might at, at Mar-a-Lago have evidence of God, I, I can't bring myself to say it. Ethical transgressions? Oh, oh, oh. We're, not, we're not talking about... It. He didn't... He tried... Did someone else try to grab America by the pussy? Is that what this is? ...committed during the 2016 election. <laughs> yes, evidence of ethical transgressions committed during the election of 2016 and he sat on him for four years and he just did he had just gotten them. the irony oh how sad he had just found them in an old filing cabinet way down in the basement behind all of course the the machines that suck blood out of children and the adrenochrome pumps and the and the secret hatchway that takes you to comet ping pong <laughs> He found in this in this old dusty file cabinet where he just I just pictured with like a fucking pen light in his mouth just going uh huh I put a I, I god damn it I dropped my bling blah bling who's down here not Trump I mean shit create and manufacture Russia it came out of the CIA oh god. He does realize that the CIA is better at this shit than he thinks they are. It came out of the the GRU, dumbass. It came out of the FSB, and it's it wasn't a, a like a, a dossier to to like con, you know let the world know what a scumbag Trump was. It was evidence of a leash. It was Russia going. By the way, tug, tug, tug. And I don't know exactly which documents he took. No, nope. no, I mean, how would you? But just basically, we'll just assume that they were all the magic exoneration documents that he's had for two years, but he didn't show anybody because he's been busy. I don't know, eating fish delights, wandering around the omelet bar, and stumbling into fucking weddings and taking the microphone. He really knows exactly what. He, uh, sorry about documents. The, he the audio is uh, is uneven in Russell land. Sorry. But, but sure. it certainly seems to align mm -hmm. with everything I knew at the time, which was that Trump wanted those documents public, um, had the power to, 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 to declassify them, and now his defense is that he did. It's amazing no. to consider that Hold a figure on. like Donald Trump rose to power. Hold, Perhaps he's even Hold on. No. At what point... Like, can we just... For the record. Um, garbage. What... What Green? Listen to what Greenwald says right there. Let's, let's see this again. Means public um, had the power to to, to to declassify them, and now it's no. There's a process for declassification. Otherwise, somebody could club you over the fucking head as president and go, I don't know. He died. He just kind of keeled over. And by the way, as he was laying there gurgling, um, he said, "All this stuff in this box I was carrying is declassified." On his word. We have a functioning government, asshole. We, the, our, our dude doesn't have a scepter for a fucking reason. Defenses that he did. Is it made? Is it defenses that he did? He didn't, though. And his lawyers aren't even making that case. Thing to consider that a figure like Donald Trump rose to power. Perhaps it's even more amazing to consider that a figure like Joe Biden could occupy office. Yet more significant. Why? There's, there's more history and, and more reason 
why someone who's been in the government for a long time and knows how things work would become president of of any organization for that matter. And by the way, it's one of the reasons why Trump has a family business and has never been public or does not have a, a you know a board or any any of that stuff because they would have drummed him out in the early 90s for fucking the place up. Note the amount of censorship that took place on social media platforms to enable Biden's unimpeded. Whoa. Look at this cut. Enable Biden's unimpeded what? Censorship that took place on social media platforms. There was none. He's talking about the Hunter Biden laptop, which does not exist. To enable Biden's unimpeded ascendancy. <laughs> unimpeded ascendancy. Well, if you mean winning the fucking election and trouncing Trump, yeah, pretty much. We are living at a time when we need to question power, the invisible power that's evidently present while the artifice of power in the form of the Republican Party and the Democrat Party. What? The invisible, I mean, like, it's basically, it's, it's sort of like dark matter meets ether. You remember, the, like, the, it's like the humors. You know, instead, you know, sure you've got the disease that the scientists can see, but inside that is, of course, demonic forces. Shift and interchange without, I would say, ever making a real impact on issues that are symbolically significant and meaningful also. Symbolically significant and meaningful also in their symbolic significance. Like the imprisonment of Assange and the exile. Ooh, that was a cut too. Like the imprisonment of Assange, he said of Snowden and Assange, and so they had to cut it out because Snowden's not in prison. <laughs> Putin killed him like 10 months ago. Issues that are symbolically significant and meaningful also, like the imprisonment of Assange and the exiling of Edward Snowden. This is Yeah, they stopped and fixed it. ...opportunity for us to observe how entrenched these power systems really... Yeah, they'd have to be totally entrenched if Trump would, you know blow off uh, doing uh, pardoning Assange and Snowden and just get like Bannon free. We are. When you see the revolving door between Washington and Wall Street, when you see the significant comparisons that can be made between the policies of both parties, when you can see successive administrations entering and leaving office without real change for American people on the issues that matter, you have to bring this question to the fore. Yeah, you have to ask this question. Why isn't infrastructure important? Why wouldn't uh, uh, the Affordable Care Act with the, uh, uh, the added single-payer system be a good step forward for Americans, which is what Biden would like to do? Why, why, what, why would anyone stand in the way of, say, DACA? Why would anyone want, why would any party campaign on the idea of destroying DACA like Marjorie Taylor Greene just said they're going to do if they take the House? I mean, in highly symbolic and actually effective policy making things. Out of your mind, how are we going to change our lives? Uh, you're not going to. You can't. You don't have a vote here. Shut the fuck up. If you want to change over there, then have a revolution and I guess topple your government and stop being a monarchy. I don't know. <laughs> Again, you have no fucking say. How are we ever going to alter these systems without dismantling the institutions that maintain systemic corruption? With it main oh, you mean the Trump Organization? <laughs> you mean the, the real estate board of, of uh, New York? Or, or you mean the government of Florida, probably? Learning to operate outside of the confines of big media, big state. B uh, yeah, we got to get outside of big tech, you know, to places like YouTube business i'm not saying that those are the only documents he took he probably i i'm not saying um i i've only seen the ones that pertain to uh you know some financial stuff you know an investment potential in you know in brazilian real estate that i was asking about he was nice enough to share those when we were having a we, we were fighting over the ketchup bottle at mar-a-lago took a bunch being trump just kind of did it all recklessly <laughs> yeah it was all part of a plan to get all the details that, you know, all the random documents about the Kennedy assassination. Shit that was just lying around, all the UFOs, where the, the, all the hollow moon documents. 
taking these boxes. I'm taking these boxes. I'm having that box. Keep that box. I don't care. Um, but I. All right. I, I think that was an attempt at comedy. Um, by the way, we now know that the boxes that were picked up from the Oval Office that contained most of these classified documents, the ones specifically that had classified documents, were packed by Trump and those closest to him in the days leading up to them moving out. The GSA picked them up from the Oval Office. I think there's certainly a relationship between his belief that documents were being hidden that should be seen. Uh, or his statements about that that only an asshole would believe. His decision to remove a lot of documents out of the White House tomorrow. Yeah, he just, that's what he would do. He made a decision to remove them out of the White House. You mean steal them? He didn't remove anything. Those documents still exist in government in some form or another. They're, those are copies. He didn't get, it's not like he has the fucking original. This isn't national, like, uh, um, like national secret or whatever what the fuck is that movie god damn it i'm blitzing on the on the nick cage movie Lord. national treasure son of a bitch you imagine how you would have felt if trump on leaving office had pardoned julian assange <laughs> um yeah um i can you imagine how you would have felt if he sprouted wings and flew as well dude was too busy <laughs> like pardoning steve bannon and those he was handing out and under the table pardons to people. He didn't give a fuck about the the only thing that would have struck people is like, oh my God, he pardoned Assange. It would have been, oh, he never wants to run for office ever again, and he expects to be paid mightily. Pardoned Edward Snowden. <laughs> yes, he pardoned. He would pardon Edward Snowden just in time to find out the Kremlin buried him three weeks before. Oh, that would change the political landscape. I really enjoy this. Is this how that would change the political landscape? Yes. This this goes back to the whole, like, can you imagine if Trump had just handled COVID a little better? No, because he wouldn't be Trump. He'd have to be a whole different fucking person. Also, this is an edit to get people to sign up or something. Nice videos. He's brilliant, isn't he? But wouldn't you like even more of him? I say, yes, this is an ad for the fucking show. Does he go back to it? There you go. So. There's a link below to join. Imagine if he had released files, but they literally just slice that in rather than just another awkward edit. Thanks, Joe. Don't forget, you can super chat. Oh, hi. You're watching, by the way, Hal Sparks Mega Worldwide. Um, he posts these clips. I'm going through the whole thing. Painting to the assassination of JFK and other. <laughs> what? Why does he actually think that that's a thing that Trump really gave a rat's ass? That's, it, Trump only knows this because they made a fucking movie about it, and Oliver Stone had been dicking around with Putin too. There, there, he doesn't have any extra info on the fucking JFK assassination. He wouldn't fucking know. He just knew that Oliver Stone made JFK, and Oliver Stone also did a documentary where he was following Putin around, and so they both shared an affinity for gargling. I guess they split a nut apiece issues that are the center of conspiracy that are too illicit even to mention on this platform yeah i can't even talk about it holla i mean the whole moon cheese thing Beep, i've been edited again ah oh, well i had to cut it out honestly what admiral bird's trip to the hole in the earth the fuck <laughs> thanks thanks regina i'm going with regina i'm going with regina is it possible oh. that donald Hold on, somebody just Venmoed me. Mary, oh my gosh, thank you so much for entertainment and education. That's lovely. I, I now have that plus $1 in my Venmo account. <laughs> thank you. Trump was a genuine outsider. No. <laughs> it's old fashioned robber baron like control structure stuff. This is corporate America trying to go as a one last gasp of a pro tax asshole taking over before the you know the democrats start you know, like coming in there with this equity bullshit and trying to grow the middle class genuinely wanted to make revelations about the machinations of american power but yeah he just had four years to do it and he never got around to it he was so busy not building the wall and getting mexico to pay for it not getting us out of afghanistan not coming up with a health care plan like doing a run-of-the-mill fucking republican tax plan he was you know, all the fucking golfing and he uh, apparently if he had just had 
six more hours. If he'd only, how long is this video? If he'd only had 11 minutes and 52 seconds for Russell to convince him. He was stopped by a deep state system. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, he was so busy freeing children from the from the uh, the cannibal underground at the White House. Let me know what you think about. I think you're an asshole. Is what I think. And and this again, this is the part where he gets it at the end of the video where he, he I I got to give these guys credit. This is the machine. This is how YouTube works. If you want to grow your channel, this is how you have to do it. So he's done. He's checking all the boxes. His team has somebody at YouTube they talk to. They get bumped in the algorithm, and he gets to go, hey, if you want to do this thing, you know, I've got my little subscribe thing right here. I'm doing my part, except I'm just not doing the hard sell that he does all the time. Uh, let me know in the comment. Let me know in the chat. If let me know in the comment. By the way, this is the, the graphic that they put up that he borrowed from uh, Steven Crowder. You think that Trump was... Hal Sparks, start using clickbait. I won't do it, James. I will not. I will grow organically or not at all. God damn it. On the brink of revealing things that would... Of course he's not. But the, again, do you think that Trump's fucking diarrhea of the mouth that he's had his whole goddamn life, and you think he, after he left office, he went two years without talking about the stuff that would get him set free i guess or or would uh like erase all the charges against him and point out that he was innocent like for <laughs> at what point would he have not said it if trump trump will blather shit out that he's just heard you if you think trump knew anything about the kennedy assassination he wouldn't have said it J just he would have teased it every fucking rally. Just uh, let me again. They, they told me I can't say anything until I get a second term. Take the state and the state system to their very foundations. <laughs> yeah, that's what it do it. Dude, what well, what the fuck do you think would happen? Oh, Eric, thank you so much. Forgot last month plus coffee. Oh, thank you so much during sec Sexy Liberal. Thank you so much for the Venmo. Appreciate it. Um, <laughs> did, uh, uh, all right. One thing I will offer you uh, is um, the scent of patchouli. No, um, scabies. No. What would he, what would Russell Brand offer us? Um, I don't know. Um, painful urination. This is a further confirmation that there is classified information that exists. That if you knew about it, if I knew about it, if we knew about it, we would no longer be able to give our trust over to the state. What? No, it isn't. <laughs> Get the fuck out of here. How is this confirmation? Because Glenn Greenwald thinks Trump had some sort of organized system set up for the taking of these documents and then went, I don't know, he probably just took some random shit. <laughs> what? If you and I knew stuff that doesn't exist, and like if we found out that the moon was made out of cheese, many of us would not even believe the structures of systems of circumstances that have been put upon us. What? We wouldn't. It, motherfucker, you don't trust the government now. Jesus Christ. Oh, Eric, thank you so much. Please come do stand-up in Salt Lake City. It's a deal. I will do it. You would realize that there are levels of corruption. Oh, terrible. Levels of... No, no. Not levels of corruption. Ah, oh, how many? Three? Oh, God. Oh, but there's subsections, aren't there? Oh, I love hearing about dirty corruption. How's that? Like, level one dash section A and B. Oh, come on. Tell us about the corruption now, Russell. What's it like? Hypocrisy. A no, level five hypocrisy. A level three hypocrisy. Assassinations, murders. <laughs> Assassinations, murders. None of which uh, are around Gazprom. I would like to say that. And um, <laughs> oh gosh, um, thank you so much, um, Eric. Did that? Oh Terry, thank you so much too. Thanks for the mental health break. Hey, I'm glad to give it to you. Do, you have nothing to fear from these idiots. Please. Uh, <laughs> murders, Al almond-eyed aliens, m of cake recipes not available to the average human that only the elites can eat. That obviously med beds, hmm? Eh, eh? Plots and. <laughs>
<laughs> he said plots, not plops, but it did sound like plops. It's, it sounded <laughs> humors, oh, ghosts, whatever, pickles and rumors of pickles. <laughs> Shut the fuck up. Lies, that would mean we'll have- Not lies, what? Oh God. <laughs> If this asshole starts to gets on about Santa, the Easter Bunny, and the Tooth Fairy, I don't know how I'm going to deal with reality anymore. How we trust these people? How can we Fuck! Oh, you're in front of a fake wooden wall. You're in a corner studio. The, the the TV screen behind you has a video image of the wood pile behind your office because you've moved there. What the fuck are you talking about? Trust them to run schools, hospitals, build roads. <laughs> Yeah, like, if we find out that J. Edgar Hoover wasn't completely trustworthy, I don't even know I'll be able to drive across a bridge ever again. I mean, sure, I mean, how do you trust the elites? You know, those engineer people, you know? I mean, I, I mean, if, 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 like, Assange isn't pardoned, maybe asphalt, asphalt, Assange, asphalt, maybe you can't trust any of it. What the, what the ever-loving fuck? is he talking about tunnels lie maybe it's not a tunnel maybe someone painted a black spot on the side of a mountain and i'm gonna run into it like the wild a coyote you know maybe though if i take russell's meditation course i'll walk right on through like the road runner uh wouldn't that be nice international diplomacy <laughs> how do we trust roads and tell them who hello hi mom if that is your real name, how do we trust anything anymore? What the, f what kind of credulous horseshit? Thank you, Heather, for your next energy drink and to piss off my dad who's watching uh, you now and texting me about it. Well, um, I, I hope your your dad um, has time to go look up Admiral Byrd and uh, Agartha because that, that's, if you want to go on a deep dive into a, a YouTube hole, that's where you need to go, dad. Knock yourself out. Also, thanks for watching. I mean you well, and uh, I hope one day you're free from all this ridiculousness. Evidently, on the basis of this secrecy alone, we can see that ultimately they are self-interested. Well, all right, first of all, no. It, it, he's First of all, you make up secrets that don't exist, and, and just, oh, uh, they must. And then the fact that you don't know what they are because you just made them up in your fucking head. This, you're, this, like, he's being stabbed by a straw man right now. He made a straw man and it's, and he's like, it's attacking me. I'm, I'm, the, I'm, try, I'm being sexually assaulted by the scarecrow from the Wizard of Oz. <laughs> and, and so the idea is that he creates this straw man idea and its very existence um, means you shouldn't trust the real human beings in your fucking life. And that these these secrets, by the way, which give give this dickhead the benefit of the doubt for a second. Um, the vast majority of of the kind of secrets uh, you you hear about, you know, like the around the Kennedy assassination and that kind of stuff. The the only way you would ever be able to keep a secret like that through so many people would be that those people, the majority of them, if not all of them, agree that it's better if the public doesn't know for their own safety and for their own concern. You know, like the the, the, the times that Russia and the U.S. almost blew each other up during the Cold War, and then we found out later, but if it had just been reported on the news that day, right now someone's got their thumb on the button, everybody would just be jumping out of fucking windows and, and offing their entire family. So a bunch of people went, maybe... We pause on when we tell people shit. Right, like Roswell, that'd be the idea. <laughs> and the idea is like, uh, if we tell people that there's aliens, they will, uh, we, we've done the math and like, you know, 600,000 people will will take out their entire family in an afternoon. So maybe we keep it on the on the down low until we can express it. You know, in such a way, that would be the theory behind it. Because you could never just keep it a secret just because they're like, I've got a gun at your family's head and your family. Because eventually somebody snaps and starts talking. Right? You know, that's, a, that's just how it works. I don't I don't have anybody, so I don't care. You know, I'm, and especially these days with the internet and all that stuff. Like, there's just nowhere, you know. Remember, like, in movies like The Net, 
or or like early computer dramas from the early 90s when somebody had a like if we just could upload this you know i've got i've got this stick that if i just stick it in the computer it'll upload the entire thing to the world and the world will know or or like in blue thunder when they had the tape of the um the the guys who were planning on using military grade weapons on on the citizenry and stuff and they had this recorded tape and it could be re erased remotely so they had to get it to the station and just as they get it to the station the guy's about to push the button to erase it remotely and it slips out of the case and just, like just in time great drama really fun and then he gets it you know to the you know they they end up playing it on tv yeah three days of the condor is a great another example of that or war games hackers the net any of those none of that exists anymore like you can literally do it from your phone like almost anybody who's like you get a thumb drive you get it in your laptop it, it, there's wi-fi fucking everywhere it's done like there's no like they keep it from us because get the fuck out of here if it existed it'd be all over the goddamn place and then by the way because the the american people have seen so much stuff around this over the years and have been soft peddled into um through documentaries and stories and things that people you know like how many fucking conspiracy theory videos have you watched how many documentaries are, are like fucking ancient aliens that if any of this stuff actually came out they go by the way uh we did find out aliens built the uh the pyramids they're 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 supposed to come back we don't know when but we know that yeah, everybody go oh that's cool book 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 Book. What else is on? Should we re you don't want to rewatch Ancient Aliens just since it's true? Yeah, why not? Politicians, self-interested. Self-interested. Fucker, we have representative democracy over here. Power players. Of power players. You can't describe Trump any better. Of course, the argument that's usually offered is we're keeping this information to protect you from. Right. That's uh, there you go. Baddies from our enemies. Well, no, that's different. Um, the baddies, our enemies. Um, no, we're not hiding who killed JFK so that the Russians don't have that information. Like, he's just mixing shit. But who among us can legitimately believe now that there's a single enemy out there that's more powerful than these deep state interests? <laughs> um, well, uh, I, w I would... Yeah, I don't wish physical harm uh, on anyone, but uh, your direct person-to-person -person, uh, issues are are, are always going to be worse because it, it, this kind of goes to the um, the neochristic view of the devil that the devil ultimately needs the system to keep humping along so that he can continue what he's doing. He doesn't want the end of the world because he made the world, and so the same thing would be true of the deep state or whatever if it. If it starts to crack or fall apart or doesn't function for enough people, eventually they'll they're gonna know who's fucked it up. Maybe I'm being naive. Maybe the yes, no, no, no. You're not being naive. You're being a manipulative bastard. Argument that I'd much rather live within American hegemony than Chinese hegemony or Russian hegemony holds true, and I should thank my lucky stars for those lucky stars and stripes. But. For me, if we're told that we live in a transparent democracy, if we're told it's... Okay, hold on. Run that by me again, fuckhead. That I'd much rather be powerful than these deep state interests. Maybe I'm being naive. Maybe the argument that I'd much rather live within American hegemony than Chinese hegemony. Why don't you go find out? I think that's the easiest way. Russell, look at him looking over to the side. Chinese hegemony. I've been to China. You've been to, Ch you've been to China, Russell? Have you? You ever been? What's it like? Or Russian hegemony holds true, and I should. I don't know. Uh, like nothing is stopping this dude from buying a t ticket to Georgia or Chechnya. Nothing. And what about British hegemony? My lucky stars for those lucky stars and stripes. But for me, if we're told that we live in a transparent democracy, if we're we're not told we live in a, tra a transparent democracy doesn't mean all national secrets are open to the world because if we live in a democracy, there are people in the world, specifically governmental heads, dictators, theocrats, and yes, monarchs, who want to upend and destroy that system. Why, what is, why is it up to democracy to drop its pants in front of the worst people in the world because... I mean, if, if not, if everything's out there and then nothing's out there. Told, it's us that elect our leaders. If we're told... We are. We, we did. 
And if this motherfucker goes into the big lie right now. America is the greatest and freest country in the world. Why didn't Trump pardon Snowden? Why? <laughs> Wait a minute. How's that, how that our fucking fault? Wait a minute. Because we didn't re-elect this motherfucker? Or because he tried to manipulate Zelensky into... Um, into creating a false investigation to recreate the Comey moment or because he aided and abetted an attack on the fucking Capitol. This is a job for Bricktop. Easy, Templeton. Not <laughs> Any sugar? No, thank you, Turkish. I'm sweet enough already. Didn't Trump pardon Assange? He didn't give a fuck. That's why. There's no deep thought in this. There's no deep state conspiracy there's no like overlapping enigma wrapped in a mystery he didn't give a fuck he still doesn't give a fuck it'll pop into his head and he'll bring it up at a fucking rally occasionally because somebody else brought it up and he thinks it will move the crowd and then if he thinks it won't move the crowd he'll fucking drop it that's it why shouldn't we know the truth about some of the greatest stories never told? <laughs> First of all, A, you're assuming that there are details that were never told. And because you never have to prove that, or you just kind of have a feeling, you can, you can make up that you're being lied to because supposedly there's another truth out there. When in reality, again... Uh, you know, I prefer Occam's razor to Occam's rubber mallet over here. That it's a lot simpler. It's just a douchebag. It's so gross. American political history. That's just what I think. Let me oh my God. You, you don't think anything. You're making this shit up. Again, uh, the, the, it, he's moving to Rumble. And he's live streaming. His conversion to hippie Alex Jones is nearly complete. We know what you think below. Nah, put in the comments section, don't you? And do the thing. From five, where we have fantastic. Oh, no, let me sell my show Enjoy again. This video, have a look at either of these. Sign up to our mailing list. Nah, fuck off. Now this is the sales part. This part, I, I have, I feel I have the right to blow off. If you don't mind. You're watching House Parks Mega Worldwide. Um, he posted that video. That's that. That's a segment of the Russell Brand show that, um, that is indicative of the depth and quality of thought you can expect. And uh, by the way, Russell will never have me or anyone who talks like me on his show. I don't I have any interest in doing it, but um, when he's talking about free thinkers and we've got to be able to, yeah, He's only going to bring on people that are in the Greenwall Jimmy Dore crowd, the Aaron Mates of the world. He's never going to bring on anybody that pushes back against his horse shit. They're going to, and the only people he's going to have on are people where he can toss his seeds on their ground and they can toss their seed on his. That's it. He's never going to invite sand on the show because uh, he's a liar and a fuck up. And he's manipulating people and his whole business he's a doom sprayer the idea is that lurking behind every corner every facade in your life is a you know is a deep intricate group that is way bigger than anything you could ever handle in your life you can't even it's so huge you could never and it the little people and they just that's what they do they puppet master us and that whole fucking alex jones bullshit story which by the way if it were true he'd have been dead a long time ago they don't drag it out they don't let the idea is that if if you had some big Illuminati, you you would never let somebody like that off the fucking ground. Their existence alone, and this goes to like Jimmy Dore's show, for example, and Russell's, except there he's a Brit, are the biggest advertisements for the American flag that exist, because neither of them could could do their show in Russia or China or in the Middle East. And if they tried, they'd be dead in a week. And so all of their decrying, the very, you know, it's it's sort of the uh, striking down Obi-Wan analogy. That if you attack it, you only make it stronger because it uh, it is strong enough to take your attacks. The That the American system can allow for the Jimmy Doors of the world to exist. 
The Russian one can't. The Chinese one can't. The increasingly the Iranian one, you know, it's is showing to having to is dealing with that right now, and it cannot either. It's uh, it is. Um, it's hilariously hypocritical. And again, when we talk about some of the serious issues about national secrets and whistleblowers and those kind of things, those, those things are meant to be taken seriously and deserve a serious conversation. But these are fundamentally in-serious people. That one of the things you have to remember is that in some cases, something may need to be said. But uh, oftentimes, a lot of the people who are saying it are literally the worst people to utter the words. Again, if you have a serious situation and and you're trying to figure out, um, I don't know, you're in a, you're there's a cave in and everybody's there trying to figure out rations and food and escape and trying to get people out of there, and somebody pipes up and s- starts screaming, "We got to get the fuck out of here." Well, materially, that's true. Thanks. You know, thanks, Alex. We do need to get the fuck out of here. But yelling it isn't helping. And we're all trying to organize a way to actually solve these things. And you're wasting everybody's time, energy, and oxygen by being a screaming lunatic. And that's, in you know, on a, on a moral and ethical reason, uh, uh, level rather, um, that's what Russell does. It's, it's, ultimately what Trump did you know he could he brought up things that were serious concerns and then brought up in serious solutions all right so one more my monitor is so large that house almost life-size I'm trying to avoid eye contact because I feel like I'm in trouble hi I'm sorry I'm a little blurry it's the it's the camera in this thing I think it's hold on I have to fix this because now it's gonna bother me um Filters, edit filters, this guy, color corrections. Okay, take that one off. Take the LUT off and the chroma key. Bring this down a touch. And then bring the contrast. The contrast is really low on this thing for some reason. It's very odd. Whoops. Okay. Well, hopefully that's a little closer. I'm almost I'm almost a little see-through because of the green screen on here. I don't know why. It's just being weird today. Okay, so next up, um, you, you guys. I mean, wh- while we're while we're on the subject of uh, people with uh, funky hair um, saying stupid shit about elite cabals of people, we I would be remiss if we didn't bring up the fact that. Uh, we lost someone today. We lost one of our very own, allegedly. Um, there's just a big void where she used to be. Um, this is from Newsmax. Elitist cabal. Tulsi Gabbard quits the Democratic Party. Dear God, how will we ever make it without her? Without her... X-Men supervillain hair and her weirdly Putin sympathetic ideas and her uh, like she's like uh, the Jekyll to Marianne Williamson's Hyde <laughs> if they were both kind of assholes <laughs> right so, let's, but this is Newsmax is coming to her uh, her her rescue and I can't wait to see how they deal with it. I mean, she's she filled in for Tucker a while back. This is a uh... All right, welcome back everybody. So- Thanks. It's so nice to be here. Thank you. No, thank you. Thanks both of you. Former Democratic presidential candidate and representative of Hawaii says she is done with the Democratic yes. Party. Oh my god, she's so done, y'all. Tulsi Gabbard calls them the elitist cabal. Cabal. And she wants other. It's a latest kebab, actually. It's so good. It's a. Uh, it's got prime rib and uh, white meat chicken and shrimp and then no green peppers. So that's fucking nasty, y'all. To follow her out as well. Yes, Gold, uh, Gabbard, who retired from the House in twenty. Hold on, this, the 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 uh, sub the closed captions are on. Sorry. Um, here she is being all American and stuff. Twenty-one. 
made the announcement official earlier today. She did not say if mm. she was joining the Republican Party. Doesn't. Yeah, she's she's you know, she's not ready. You know, she's gonna she's an independent thinker. Okay, neither party is good. She didn't want to be in there with them rhinos. Sound like she is based on what she said, but let's listen to Gabbard and her reasons why she is now leaving the Democrats. Let's listen. To, let's because let's listen to women. <laughs> Finally, I think it's important. Party. Now I'm calling on my fellow common sense, independent minded Democrats. Yeah, out uh, fellow common sense, independent minded Democrats. Independent minded. So is it good enough that I'm a Democrat, but I don't worship Joe Biden the way maggots worship Trump? That I think he's just a well-qualified man doing a really hard job really well? Is that independent-minded enough? Because if it is, then you can include me in that descriptive group. I don't know what you regard as common sense. That's usually a buzzword. Um, but uh, but let's just say I do. And, um, and uh, to that, I would say, uh, but, yeah. fuck you. To join me in leaving the Democratic Party. Leave with me. Follow me. Follow me. Leave the Democratic Party and join my podcast audience. If you can no longer... What is the screaming in the background? Are the, is, it, is that just the noise of hell? I'm like the direction that the so-called woke Democratic Party ideologue... What, where is she? I thought this was something she posted on her own thing, but I swear to God, that sounds like the wailing of the dead. Is it... What is, do you guys hear that? Is it just me? Listen to this shit. ...minded Democrats to join me in leaving the Democratic Party. If you can no longer... <laughs> Literally. I just... I, it, it sounds like it's just the... the yes, the, the seventh... She's broadcasting live from the seventh level of hell. ...stomach the direction that the so-called woke Democratic mm. Party ideology... So-called woke. ...are taking our country. Mm. Taking our country towards rural broadband and insurance companies that cheat the government getting busted. It's terrible. And I invite you to join me. And I invite you to join me. Join me. Come play with us, Danny. Forever. So not a huge surprise. Uh, it was- Yeah, it's not, it's not a huge surprise. I and mean, ultimately, it's like, what's, what's surprising is, is that I'm standing here doing my fucking job and you're on your goddamn phone, Gerald. 2019 during the Democratic put your fucking phone down will you presidential debate where she uh, you know shared the stage she was with Joe Biden Kamala Harris standing right there and she did blast mm. the Democratic establishment even back then mm. she, totally our Democratic Party unfortunately is not the party that is of by and for the people no it is of by and for the elites and that and uh, I would run as a Republican but they don't run women for president that's i can be vice president but they you have to sign this piece of paper that lets them uh shoot you and hand your job to uh kevin mccarthy if you i was i was uncomfortable with that is it, a par it is a party that has been and continues to be influenced by the foreign policy establishment in washington by the foreign policy establishment oh you mean the people that recognize china and russia as threats to democracy is that what you're talking about? The foreign policy? Is that, you mean the State Department going, um, this, we have satellite images. They're, they're moving missiles. That's a, that's a person being pushed out of a window. <laughs> like, ah. Represented by Hillary Clinton and others' foreign policy, by the military industrial complex and other greedy corporate interests. Mm, greedy, greedy, greedy corporate interests. Like, uh, Gazprom? No. Hard to believe that was three years ago. It is. It's so hard to believe it was three years ago. And then nary a few months later, Biden would hand Trump his ass. Yeah. Right? Wow. Time flies. Let's welcome in our guest to talk more about this. Yeah. Democratic campaign strategist and former Obama campaign director, Robin Biro. Great to have you with us. Hey, Robin Biro. Robin. Robin. Good to be with you. Thank you. So, okay. Are there just people being slaughtered in the background. What the hell is that? Hopefully we'll get Jesse Jane back with us in just a moment. I hope so. And this 
is a new we don't want to have to just talk to a democrat this is gross take on tulsi's 2019 riff there when she was running for president as democrat is there anything behind this announcement other than money the launch of her new podcast what <laughs> anything other than the launch of her new um uh, no N no no there isn't what's going on here robin <laughs> I was just about to say, she's launching a new podcast. And honestly, I think this is an audition for her to get a show on, on a look, John, she might be looking to you to pray. Hey, she's off. welcome. Yeah. She has, she, we'd love to have Tulsi Gabbard uh, join us. Uh, Don't look at, she's like, what the fuck are you saying? That There's no, no. Um, also, yeah, Newsmax isn't gonna hire her. She's a brunette. Uh, here if she wants the brunettes always go to rsbn that's how christina bob got her job for uh, maybe not a whole show but i'd like <laughs> she's welcome here anytime not to stay obviously not as you know <clears throat> as a job thing what i would think we don't <laughs> we got we're up to her here and in, uh, in women to have her you know follow <laughs> follow up with some questions of course. yeah was, was, we're gonna ask her some things like she's just like Look at the fucking daggers. Like, what the? How do you fucking? Sh what? What do you mean, she? Who? Huh? Who you? Is that who you're gonna have on? Hmm? Son, is that what you like now? Is that your thing? Is that what you're gonna have? Huh? For sure. I've got to admit to you. I've got to admit to you. I'm gonna get skewered by my friends on the left. But I actually donated to her campaign back when she was running for president because she was a veteran and i liked se several of her policies so i am sad to see her go but uh like bianca alluded to i'm not surprised this has been a long time in the coming and on long time in the coming i thought she'd already left so this mm -hmm. came as news to me the fact that she's just now leaving mm -hmm. yeah well yeah so basically what i'm trying to tell you is that you're uh, both getting all wrapped up in a non-story and being used to promote a podcast what a great afternoon for the two of you. I mean, this is big. This is big breaking news for the two of you. Aren't you lucky you were on the air when this happened? And I happen to be available to come on with the two of you. We have Jesse Jane Duff, uh, of course, is uh, well to join us now. She's well to, was she, was she unwell? What happened? Iron Marine Gunnery Sergeant and Newsmax contributor. So um, thanks for popping in on this. So Tulsi Gabbard, your reaction to her quitting the Democratic Party? A lot of people say she's, she's not a true conservative either, though. No, she's not going to suddenly join the Republican Party. Uh, she has essentially messaged conservatives. She went to CPAC. She gives a rousing call against Democrats. By the way, uh, can we just, beyond the, like, the murder sounds in the background. I honestly don't know. Does Newsmax, like, do, do they run on, like, burned human flesh and they're just shoving people into a meat grinder in the background? I don't know what's going on or where they're broadcasting from or where that audio is coming from. But can we just enjoy the fact that she's like, I'm leaving and you should leave with me. And everybody over there is like, piss off. <laughs> That's which is very popular. She's basically trying to cater to an audience that may tune into her podcast mm -hmm. and give her a great platform. She great platform, you know, a great platform of, you know, there's a, there's a lot of money in suspicious distrust of the deep state. It's a it's a, it's such a I, don't, I mean, honestly, there's a, they take they teach a class at SUNY on on how to build a show around su suspicion of the deep state become a Republican. She may become a Libertarian, who knows, or an Independent. But mm. I do appreciate that she's calling out mm. these woke policies that really are doing nothing for this country. She's calling out the fact that there is no religious freedom because we are seeing this pushback against conservatives and Christians. You what now? Is that it? it first of all, A, is that what she's saying? Um, secondly, no. Um, thirdly, A, like she fucking cares, and B, how, how is not letting people's lives be dictated on a legal level by your religious belief an attack on your religion? Secondarily, the minute you codify your religious beliefs or activities in law, they seek to become acts of faith, for the record. Like, I, I think we need laws against murder, but... You're not making a moral choice or being moral if you the only reason you don't murder someone is because it's against the law. 
I mean, in a lesser stance, I also believe that pertains to the belief of heaven and hell, still just punishment activity. But the, but the 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 moral belief would be I'm not going to do it because it's wrong, not because I might get caught and prison would suck. And so, anytime you put it into that category, you take the faith out of it. So, if there's an attack on religious beliefs, it's by those who want it written in law so they can it can be on autopilot. It is it is exactly what's happened with. Um, with uh, hijabs and burqas in in Iran, and that's exactly the pushback that's happening. And by the way, she looks very calm and lovely. Consistently, um, many groups that have been attacked mm. by the left have been Jewish and Christian groups. So here we are. Huh? <laughs> many groups that have been attacked by the left are Jewish and Christian groups. Notice she apparently thinks we that Muslim groups aren't attacked. So that's the whole, like, they're trying to install Sharia law, and you're like, asshole, you don't re realize that if you codify your religious belief because you're the dominant group, at any time, whoever the dominant group is could then codify their religious beliefs. And that's one of the ways you keep, say, something like Sharia law from being implemented in the uh, state and federal system, especially, is that you don't allow other religious groups to get a toehold and enforce their religious beliefs, like, you know, m mandatory circumcision for everybody who lives in your county. Our, uh, Tulsi Gabbard is basically saying, I'm free of this. Now I can speak my mind. I yeah, because she hasn't been able to speak her mind. I don't have a political agenda for my own election, just a podcast, and I'm here to talk. Yep. Yeah, it's like nothing matters anymore. I don't really have a career. And there's just a lot of money to be made in panicking people about the deep state. That is her role today, and yeah, she's welcome to come on again. <laughs> she's welcome to come on and cut. No, no, she's not. That's that's the edit they put in. She's welcome to come on today and uh, didn't even let her get the fucking word out. No, according to Newsmax, uh, she's not. <laughs> that by the way, I bet you anything when that dude was like, because they have IFBs, they have uh, somebody talking in their ear a little bit because they're uh, relatively run like a professional studio i think at newsmax except when greg kelly's on somebody went no 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 she's not coming on for a whole show we're not host she's not gonna be a host fuck that no we're not doing that and so he went uh, you know to fill out some to answer some questions to add you know f f f fill some answers in for some questions that i might have <laughs> bail on jesus christ um you're watching house parks mega worldwide and i think that shows taste and breeding on your part don't forget to like and subscribe. Give a thumbs up, especially if you're a troll. For God's sake, for God darn darn. Who is it, Mr. Singleton? And then, um, oh, look at this. Limited time to earn exclusive emotes. And the where oh, there's another hype train. Level one hype train is starting. It's halfway through. We got four minutes and thirty nine seconds for another one. And the you can see the uh, I've got a. This is my look at this. Oh yeah. This, this, look at this. That's the uh, curtains in my hotel room. Schmancy, huh? Yeah, it looks like a earth tone version of Wonder Woman's bustier. It's good quality. Um, here I am, though. Um, and hi, Templeton. Big as a house. I'm in your house. Um, uh, <laughs> level one hype train. We're getting there. Um, if, if you um, are so inclined and you want to help the show, um, patreon.com slash housesparks. Next Wednesday, of course, I'll be doing another show at Flappers. If you're a patron, you can come to the show and bring a guest for free to any of my live stand-up shows. And then, of course, uh, I will live stream it to the patrons um, from my, uh, you know, from the showroom on that night, no matter where you are in the world. And then everybody else gets to watch it later. I'm not, it's not like I'm I don't do the paywall thing very well. I mean, I, some some like early access seems like the most I would want to do. But like, here's here's what it feels like to me. Let me before I move on to my next clip and finish out for the evening, um, uh, there is a there's a tradition or history, um, and you may have heard about this because of the you know like some of the people who had performed in Russia and then went I'm not doing that shit again, um, and like. Big celebrities like Beyonce and others who performed on like the yachts of oh thanks Norman look at that got us to the hype train right out of the gate bless you um, that you know they perform on these like mega yachts and stuff for like a huge payday and I don't blame them for doing it like who's gonna pass that shit up as long as it, the person isn't directly a a murderer or someone awful hey, whatever do your thing it's not I'm not here it's music or it's comedy or whatever you're doing most of the time it's music. That these folks go and perform for 
But it always seemed a bit weird. Like, I'm doing this exclusive show only for people who can afford to get on this yacht at this time. It That seems weird to me. And so doing a paywall thing on Patreon where we have exclusive content where you can only see this if you're a member or like... Uh, Steven Crowder does his Mug Club, which for the longest time I thought was Mud Club because of the way they say it all the time. And I, I'm, I'm still going to call it that because I think it's more, appro- more appropriate to what's uh, actually in the, in the content of the show. Um, mud Club. And then um, uh, TYT does that. They have their kind of like, you know, the first hour's free kind of drug addict uh, drag that they do. Um, so I just don't, I feel that's wrong. So if you want to support the show, please support the show in its form and in its openness. I have no interest in throwing up a curtain of exclusivity and having people pay for that exclusivity. That's not why I do the show. So if you're going to contribute, please contribute with the knowledge that um, you're doing it because you like what I do with the show and you want more people to see it. If that makes sense. I hope it does. That's it. I just I have, I have no... It doesn't interest me to make this kind of stuff exclusive in any way. So, I'm just going to say that outright. I just find that odd. And, um, you know what else I find odd? <laughs> I, um, I, I find Diamond and Silk very odd. I find them very odd. These, these ladies, bless their hearts... Um, are uh, they've got a regular show now on Mike Lindell's network, and this is this is the name of this one. Jim Crow Joe Biden is pardoning anyone locked up for mar- possession of marijuana. <laughs> that's yes, I know, I know. You're thinking, no, that's not actually what happened. You're like, no, 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 <laughs> no. Um, it's whatever they say it is because I don't understand. <laughs> I don't know. Understand why they it. And, and again, the accusation on the right, the language around the right, is that Biden is doing this to buy the black vote. This has been the story on a myriad of right-wing uh, shows, uh, internet shows anyways, like YouTube and, and Rumble. On the show. That's what they're always saying. It's like, you know, he's just doing this marijuana stuff to make the black people vote for him. That's really it. So these, they're, I will say at least they are varying from the standard line on the Republican side of the aisle um, by saying that he, they're calling him Jim Crow Joe Biden and that he's doing this just to... I, I, I'm really curious. I honestly am really curious um, what they're... where they... Uh, well, where they take this. Because the name confuses me. Like I said, considering the sales so point. My son got me this weird new tool. For cool. Father's Day. That's nice. And at first, I thought it looked kind of crazy. It's crazy. Hold on. All prior federal offenses of simple marijuana possession. Hold on one second. I, I, I need to hear their full description of this. And it was a little quiet. Let me bring it up. Because they're these two share a mic in the foyer or wherever they do their show. They're at the dining room table off the living room. Uh, does anybody know if wh- whose house this is? It's one of their houses, I think. They don't. Do they live together? I, I, I there's got to be a documentary made. I'm just saying. Okay, back up. So I'm reading that Biden is pardoning all prior federal offenses of simple marijuana possession. Uh huh. Mm-hmm. He goes on to say there are thousands of people who were previously convicted of simple possession who may be denied employment, housing or educational opportunities as a result. He said, my pardon will remove this burden. So in my humble opinion, I want you all to be careful because- Yeah, be very careful. This could be another 52 fake out. Is that- This could be another 52 fake out. <laughs> Is this one of those things where like, they, you want a microwave, just come down to the police station and pick it up. And it turns out they, it, it was it was a trap. It's a trap. Exactly. These people are trying to win an election. Yeah. <laughs> right. Okay. So it's, it is the same thing. They're, they're, they have been sent on behalf of Mike Lindell to be the, the black whisperers for Lindell TV. That's what they, okay. So if I go ahead on and I put this in place, then all of these people will vote for me. 
if Biden pardon you, you better vote for American first policy. That's right. <laughs> okay, first of all, it's a uh, America first as a policy. I just uh, it's kind of important. Trump makes the same mistake, so you're totally forgiven. American first would technically be, I mean, you can only vote if you're an American. So, uh, all right. You better vote for a Republican. Yeah. <laughs> You better vote vote for the person who wants it to be harder for you to get a job because now you're going to have to work. What? Do not vote for Biden. No. <laughs> yes, I agree. In this midterm, don't vote for Biden. I, I would say if you see that on the voting machine... And you don't have, like, someone who just randomly has the name Biden running for fucking comptroller in your state, um, which would be hilarious. Don't vote for him in the midterm. Please. Biden handed you trickets and treats? Mm-hmm. Wait a minute. What was <laughs> Biden's handing you trinkets and treats, like no longer having a federal simple possession charge on your record see, yeah see let me can i just say ahead. yeah please jump in please because i'm not quite sure why we're mad at him go let ahead. me I just get this all off go ahead. Go let ahead. me tell you what's wrong with biden uh -huh. okay please tell me what's wrong with biden doing this for people see we don't saw that video yeah where biden's son was wearing all of that crap come on yeah <laughs> wait a minute his son was wearing all of that crack wearing it i didn't i didn't realize he'd made a <laughs> i wear my crack of many colors i've got <laughs> okay uh -huh. no not okay wearing crack who wears crack i mean it's it's look it was in fashion a long time ago maybe in the 90s people wore crack i mean it was easy to come by or whatever but you get a good sweat on you're gonna be fucked up for days he don't want nobody to call him out on that that's so he doesn't want Biden doesn't want anybody calling him out for his son wearing crack. So he's pardoning people for simple possession as a distraction. I'm just going to say that if you're for future politicians, if you're watching this and you're like, I like what Biden's doing, but I, I think he made a couple of mistakes. I, how could I improve on it? One, one way one way is that if you're trying to draw attention away from a drug-related scandal in your family, don't make big political moves involving drugs. So, let me give you an example. If, um, if your son-in-law uh, got a job in the White House, but not a real job. He just got to hang around and whisper in your ear all the time, like some sort of android Rasputin, uh, just because he was married to your daughter. And they made this $2 billion deal with the Saudis, and you didn't want people to pay attention to that because it was a little bit sketchy, and you were hoping he would give you some. Um, the, at one, maybe, maybe don't pardon people who failed to, uh, you know, who, who violated the FARA Act and had a deal with the Saudis in particular. I'm just saying, you know what I mean? Like, I would go way over here. Like a magician, if you're trying to, you know, make something disappear, um, don't... Your, your distraction can't be right next to the other. Like, oh, see, see this right here? See this? Watch this. Watch this. Ah, oh, poof. That, that You have to try moving it over here. I'm just saying, you know what I mean? Like... Kind of why <laughs> can't on my green screen's not big enough. My arm has disappeared. Um he think he doing you he think he doing us a favor. He I is he? I don't know. Is this the day we find out that both Diamond and or Silk um have a, a simple possession charge? Uh, if so, I'm glad it's expunged. I don't think this should stop you from getting a job at Lindell TV. To the thing, yeah. he's doing you a favor yeah. mm -hmm. while he's trying to save his son, Hunter. Yeah. Um. Yes. This, uh, I just, you know, insofar as anyone knows, um, Hunter does not have a simple pot possession charge in his past that has been stopping him from getting work as a painter or something. Uh -huh. 
again. See, keep in mind that this is the same man that wrote the piece of legislation That's right. uh, back in 1994, the 1994 crime yeah. bill. Mm -hmm. Yes, the one that uh, all the black mayors signed on to and the, the Congressional Black Caucus was actually for and that uh, the vast majority of which uh, people are asking for a new version of it today and that the illusion is is that the um, the crime bill is why we had over incarceration in the United States when that had nothing to do with it. In fact, it was the fingerprint system and VICAP coming online in six years time from 1993 to 1999, which is 100% why there was so much more incarceration because you could no longer rapey, murdery, kill and steal and then move to another state and say, my name's Sam. I don't know what the fuck you're talking about and get away with it or go to state penitentiary and then have them not be able to find you while they were looking for you being rapey murdery killy and 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 thievy in another state to lock you up <laughs> well it, it would seem that he's he's saying that that shouldn't lock you up that's right if you had just a little bit of something something come on if you had a little bit of something something come on um, by the way, if you still have a little bit of something, something, and it happens to be a little bit of fentanyl or heroin or something else, you're still going to jail. But simple possession of marijuana is not, I mean, it's, it, it's, it is now it, and should be in the category of open container of alcohol, a ticket, um, but stop it. Uh-huh. Now... He now, he want to say, oh, Lord, I had a come to Jesus moment. Mm -hmm. uh -huh. And today he said. To OK, so if if he's trying to say he had a come to Jesus moment, then it wouldn't work if it ended up being a trap. So obviously your fault is your problem is with Jesus, I think, at this point. Silk, I'm, I'm fairly certain if you're going to be upset with anybody. We have to blame Jesus at this point. I'm sorry. Biden came to Jesus, and Jesus said, I think the simple possession thing is a no-brainer. I'm paraphrasing. He says a lot of these and thys and those, you know. Because um, I, in my, in you know, in my universe, uh, Jesus <laughs> speaks King James. Because um, I don't understand Greek, and it would just be a mess. Today, um, we begin to write our wrongs. You should have put it 20, 20 oh, years later. Oh, like, oh, 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 she was mad. There's going to be an outburst. We should have what? Well, you just told me about jumping up there. You should have been wrong. Oh, oh, been you're wrong. 20 years later, now he want to right his wrong. First of all, the crime bill didn't make possession of marijuana a crime or make it a Schedule A narcotic. It didn't get lined up with the other drugs in 1994. It's been, it's been that way since fucking Nixon. Just say that. Go ahead on the, the gas. Uh, oh yeah, but yeah, t tap tap the brakes there, Diamond. Just we we're here to listen. You don't have to scream. We're 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 giving you your moment. Uh, if Biden wanna right his wrong. Mm -hmm. If Biden wants to right his wrongs. Start mm -hmm. all the way back when you joined the racist Democrat Party. That's <laughs> start all the way back when you joined the racist Democrat Party and made Kamala Harris your vice president because racism. Right. When you were hand in hand with a KKK hey, member. That's right. When you said you reached across the aisle with saying. the segregationist. Uh -huh. Well, yeah, they had to reach across the aisle because they were not in his party. They were, they were, what's across the, okay, if you're a Democrat, I'm just saying, what? What's across the aisle? If you if you if they're if you're hand in hand, they he wouldn't have to reach across the aisle. He it would be on his side of the aisle. But why? This is, you might be onto something, Diamond. You might you might have just stumbled into something wonderful. You might this might be an it's a potential for an aha moment. <laughs> but the reason he had to reach across the aisle <laughs> was because. Yes, Democratic Party. Thank you for pointing that out as well, Norman. Um, is because across the aisle was the Republican Party, home of Strom Thurmond, for example. You didn't have to reach far because they were right, right there, there in your party. party. When you <laughs> well, I mean, it was all a big party. I mean, they were drinking. Say, if you don't vote for me, you uh, ain't black. Write those wrong. That's right. <laughs> write those wrongs. Uh, yeah. I, I will, to be completely frank, I 
I did not, he was quoting somebody when he said that, um, and I thought that's a bad uh, phrase to make it sound like it came directly from you. He was directly, he was saying, like, somebody said you did it, and everybody cut out that part of it. And I, I think that's a mistake to say. I think that's an awkward thing to say as a, as a white fellow. I think that's strange. It doesn't bother me. Uh, uh, you know, as far as the policies, it's, it's working out pretty well for everybody. The equity and equality ideals of the Repu- uh, of the Democratic Party currently um, uh, being what they are, I think it's all right. And you know, I said 20 years. Actually, it's almost 30 years. Yes, it was. You're right. The, the 90s were 30 years ago. Were we ever so young? Mm-hmm. Almost 30 years later. Mm-hmm. Okay. Now, okay. You probably, I don't know if you still got people locked up for a little bit of something, something. No. No, most of the most of the people who, and they didn't, all right, you realize the crime bill when it went into effect didn't just like lock up a bunch of people right then, like that year, and then they didn't, the laws didn't apply going forward. Also, the the point was is that the people had, you know, ex, there was expunging con, convictions and pardoning them because a lot of them did very little time, if any, sometimes they get, you know, probation or work release or you know minor stuff depending on the jurisdiction depending on what hard asses they were most of it again these are all federal charges they're trying to get the states to to follow up but at no point like none of them are nobody's still in jail for one count of simple simple possession that's pretty i would call that complex possession if that were the case because of this year particular 1994 crime bill yeah because the crime bill did not make pot illegal it 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 didn't make the crime bill did not make simple possession a 35 year charge (laughs) just for the record but i do know thanks Beatos. that people are devastated you probably had a lot of people that couldn't get jobs just yeah again when did they think pot became illegal but right. I couldn't get housing that was out on the street homeless because of the way that they had these legislations written up it, thanks to Jim Crow here Joe. is what needs to happen. No. Hi, dummy. Most of the crime, the, the crime bill stuff had to do with repeat offenders anyways. It was more in line with three strikes than it was with one strike. Happened to Jim Crow Joe. Uh-huh. Just like I am requesting that Nancy Pelosi pick crops. Uh huh. Jim Crow Joe need to be where he can't get nothing. So hold on. That Nancy Pelosi do what? Here Joe. is what needs to happen to Jim Crow Joe. Uh huh. Just like I am requesting that Nancy Pelosi pick crops. Uh huh. Pick cr- Nancy Pelosi pick crops. Um, because she's old I don't know well it's hard to say Jim Crow Joe need to be where he can't get nothing so he can see how that feels Jim Crow Joe needs to be where he can't get anything so he can know how that feels like where I mean like a like one of those saline tanks? Because yeah. let me just say this here, then we're going to bring on the gas. Yeah, please. What you can't do is leave a border wide open. Uh-huh. Or, yeah, the border's not wide open. Or, or fix it where this here mess gets into the community. Right. And now you want to lock everybody Body up. up. The, the problem at the beginning of the video was that he wants to let everybody out. And then now it, he wants to lock. I, I don't know. I, I don't. <laughs> oh, man. Yeah, but I don't. That, do you, it, it, I, I keep wanting to, one of them to just like reach up and take the piece of paper and go. That's my bad. (laughs) So do we let him out or lock him up? Is Biden bad for letting him out or locking him up? Or is he, it's a trick. He's only letting people out who aren't 
in so that he can lock them back up. I don't know. I, I, you got to give them points for trying. I suppose they, they held. We held on as long as this. I, I can't imagine. There's, it's. I mean, it's only got 150 rumbles, so it's not doing that well. But it and it it has 471 views. It's it's new. They've got 600,000 subscribers, and yet, am I, am I one of the, am I, am I to believe that with, maybe it just takes a while, maybe there's a trickle down to it, maybe this is network subscribers, am I to believe that with 601,000 subscribers, this video, which is all of three minutes long, only, and it's a, it's a day old, it's been sitting, um, and it's, and topic-wise, it's like three days old. Ma nobody wants to click on Jim Crow? I doubt it. I don't think that's what, the, I don't think that's what's going on. I, they, uh, he, they call him this all the time. Come on, patrons. That's right. Patreon.com slash House Parks. Support the show if you if you can. If you can't, do not worry about it. Please please help in any way that you can. It's always good uh, when people super chat. If you're on Facebook, um, you can use stars. It's a great way to support. Um, we have bots. Did we get some bots in here? I, uh, I tried to clear. It's, I, it's At this point, I, I feel like they couldn't do an SNL skit about these guys because... It would. It, it's kind of like the Herschel Walker stuff. It can appear racist, even though it, the what their idiocy has nothing to do with their skin color. They're just they're just assholes. <laughs> like uh, you know, but I can see why they'd go like, oh, I'm not quite sure if we can get away. Right. Um, it's amazing to me um, that this. I mean, they they they've got a regular show on Lindell TV. Yeah, yeah. A wave if you're a bot in the chat. By the way, I think it's important for us to know. Um, uh, robot face if you're a bot or whatever. Here I'll I'll move over here and um, and I'm gonna I'm gonna sign off so that uh, Summer and I can go uh, have some food and and hang out. Um, oh, a new subscriber. Thank you so much. Um, if you're on YouTube, uh, don't forget to subscribe. Um, I think I've um, reminded people enough uh, with this little thing going the entire time. Hopefully. Um, let's see. I'm looking through the chat real quick. Um, uh, thank you so much, Sanko, Sanko, whatever that, San Diego, I guess, something in there. Um, bleep, bloop, burp, beep, bark, 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 trolling, 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 trolling. Um, there you go. Plenty of robot faces showing up behind me. Bleep, bloop, blork, blork, bleep, bloop, blork. <laughs> Fan. Fantastic. Um, all right, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to sign off uh, a little bit early slash late because I started late. And I will see you guys tomorrow. Um, what I'm probably going to do is have a like a, a, like a late morning show tomorrow, um, depending on the quality of the internet here and whether I can pull it off. And then um, because I've got, you know, might be able to do part of it. We'll, we'll figure out the timing tomorrow. But I've got sound check tomorrow for the Rock Against MS thing at 6 o'clock. Which is right over here. It's not too far away, but it's um, there's some other stuff I have to do because I'm hosting it as well. So Nerd Halen is performing, but I'm also hosting the evening. Um, so um, oh, thank you so much, Mark. Um, summer love and have a blast. Oh, thanks. I appreciate that. I will. Uh, um, I'll make sure she has plenty of coffee. That'll be good. Um, but uh, anyway, so I'm. I have extra duties tomorrow and I'm trying to work out when the schedule for that will be and it's a little in flux because of the people running it and me trying to be as helpful as I possibly can so um am I renting a tux no it's a rock show at the whiskey it's rock against MX, MS I don't need a, a tuxedo for that so fear not um do you catch LA City thing uh sorry did you catch that LA City thing today streamed live? Yeah, well, yes, I watched part of it uh, at the LA City Council. Um, even Biden chimed in on that. Like it, it was heavy duty. Oh man, just I mean, and the recording is grotesque. Like don't like kind of asshole. Like how 
how like drunk with power do you have to be to even and beyond just being bigoted and racist and saying stuff like that how drunk with power do you have to be to like comfortably say that shit out loud you know what i mean like who lives like that that always boggles my mind i don't uh, at all understand treating other human beings that way um but imagine just what it would take okay so la city council there was the head of the la city council the first female Latino uh, head of the city council was caught on tape talking to two other um, uh, council members and saying very racist things about black members of the council. And specifically, one of the statements was about the two-year-old child of one of the other the black members of the uh, of the uh, council. It's gross. Anyways, on purpose. And it was just, it's just gross. All of it, just gross. Just bigoted, nasty, awful, terrible shit. But the the weird part is, like I said, I'm always amazed at the people who think they'll, like in this day and age, that you can just talk like that and you know, like, like it's nothing. Like even those thoughts, like, uh, and again, this is just me not being able to wrap my head around that kind of behavior, but... Like it doesn't, on its way from your brain to your mouth, there are no checks on that shit. Where somebody, it, it like, beyond it, like, just the, again, the danger of being caught saying something bad, but just like your own moral and ethical checks and balances that exist aren't going to go, ugh, what was that? Eey, what am I saying? Like, you know what I mean? Like that, it, imagine being that far gone where you could say shit like that. And you don't even catch it. Like, I've seen, like, like Gavin McGinnis and the Proud Boys guys who are gross. Like, you can see them catching themselves sometimes. You know what I mean? Like, when they're like, okay, where I am? What can I say? What's free? You know what I mean? What's free to say? You can, there's a, there's like a, there's a hitch in their get along. They tap the brakes on it, right? But you can tell they're having the thoughts, but they're just like, oh, oh, oh. I can't really say what I really want to say, right? There was none of that in this. Uh, I don't understand how anyone could think it. Never mind, say it. I agree, Slayer Check. That's that's kind of my point. Is like, I don't know where your own brain just goes. What the fuck am I doing? Much less the comfort at which they just kind of like were on tape yammering about it. I uh, like it. The whole thing blows my mind. But it's gross. It was disgusting, and. Off, you know, off she goes. She dropped off. As she dropped out, she resigned. Um, and then the two others that were on the phone call with her um, showed up at the big city council meeting today, and uh, uh, apparently thought they were just gonna go back to work. And everybody was like, "Fuck off!" Literally, like this woman was like, "Fuck you!" and "Fuck her!" and "Fuck him!" and "Fuck this!" It was hilarious. Uh, but we're all talking about it. Well, we are talking about it because it's wrong. It's it has no place in our society. It's disgusting, and the right thing is happening. There was outrage, as there should be, and those engaged in that behavior are stepping down or being broomed out. Good. I mean, I don't have any illusions that human beings, like sometime around 1975, got their shit together by any means. We, you know, every new generation needs to be cultured just like the last. We're not, nobody's running on fucking ethical or moral autopilot, right? You got to teach, you know, I, children are the future. So whatever you teach them is, is how our country and the world will run. That's why it's important. That's why everybody's focused on like teaching kids you know, sharing and respect and not bullying and that kind of stuff. And there, there's, there is a, a measure in that behavior that you have to deal with, you know, in, in like, okay, how do I teach a kid to be sharing and accepting of others, but without getting, you know, trampled on when they encounter another person who was not raised in an equal setting like that, or who was not taught 
good manners and the like. And, and that's that's a real consideration for real human beings in true human interactions, and, and especially in a multicultural country like the United States on a on an sort of ethnic and national multicultural level. There, and so far as I believe, there's a single American culture around the politics of of the Constitution that we all believe in the rule of law. We, you know, that's that's sort of the buy-in for the American system. That's the single culture of it. How you express that culture on an interpersonal and social level is different for a lot of people. But the baseline needs to be there. That's the acceptance. That's the that's the buy-in of every immigrant that comes into the country or every child that's born here. And you don't take it for granted. You know, we we make you know uh, immigrants pass a pass a test to become a citizen here, right? But we also teach our children those traits as they grow up so that they participate in it with everybody else. So um, when people don't, you, you know, one of the reasons why you do make a big stink of it and you do say this is wrong and we won't tolerate it and get the fuck out of here is so everybody knows the, the culture we're all, we're all operating in, which is everybody gets an equal shot at this system. Ever, the rule of law applies e- equally to everyone and everybody is welcome to do their best here. Teach your children well. That's exactly right. You're free to be a dick, not free to, uh, from being called out for it. Yeah, but you also don't get to represent uh, in government a lot of people um, if you're a dick and they're like, or a bigot, and they're like, yeah, we don't, we're not bigots, and you don't get to represent us as such. If you want to, you have the freedom to be a bigot, and and the limit and experience the limitations socially in this country that you will. And by the way, there are lots of countries in the world where being a bigot won't hurt you one bit. There's a bunch of racially homogenous countries where the other is just awful and easy to point out. This ain't one of them. America doesn't show up on anybody's 23 and me. And the buy-in is that everybody participates in it. So, anyways, they're into the lecture. You guys are wonderful. Um, take care of yourself and take care of somebody else. I love you guys a lot. And I will see you guys tomorrow morning. Um, and uh, if I have to move the morning show around, I will uh, send up a signal flare on Twitter and let you guys know. Um, and until then, I'll see you soon. Okay, thanks. Don't forget to like and subscribe on your on your way out if you aren't already. And I will see you soon. Thank you guys so much for the super chats. Thank you so much for the... Uh, we had a couple of new patrons. One right before we started the show today, which was lovely. And then, um, of course, thank you guys for the Venmos and I will see you tomorrow.